Hello, welcome to worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer. I'm the senior pastor here at Mount Olive, and we're so glad you you joined us for worship on this, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We are in the green season, the Sundays after Epiphany, when we think about how we grow in our love and faith for Jesus. Today, we hear a story about Jesus calling to his friends to put down their nets and follow him. Last time, Peter shouted, pull! Andrew, James, and John pulled in their fishing nets, empty again. The men slumped in the boat. They fished all night, but caught no fish. Slowly, they rowed back to shore. They felt disappointed, tired, and hungry. Jesus walked up to them and got into the boat. People had gathered on the beach to hear Jesus teach. As they floated out into the water, Jesus said, Peter, try your nets one more time. Teacher, Peter groaned as he lowered the nets. There are no fish here. But Peter felt a tug and another. The fishermen struggled to pull in the nets flopping fish filled the boat. Impossible, yelled James. A miracle, yelled Andrew. Jesus filled our nets with fish, yelled John. Peter fell to his knees and whispered, leave me alone, Jesus. I don't deserve this miracle from God. Don't be afraid, Jesus comforted. God's miracles are for everyone. Follow me. We won't catch any more fish. We'll catch people. Peter dropped the nets, still wiggling with fish. The fishermen left their boats and followed Jesus. Jesus caught others along the way. Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas. Twelve men heard Jesus and followed him as disciples. So Jesus called to his friends to put down their fishing nets and follow him to go and catch people instead of fish. In your baptism, when you were washed in the waters and marked with the cross of Christ, you became a disciple. You became a follower of Jesus. It is your job 
to go out and tell others about the love of Jesus and to share God's great gifts with the world. Say a prayer with me, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for the waters that we have been washed in that make us all one in your love and the waters that help green things to grow and also help us to grow. Help us as we grow in our love and faith in Jesus in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first lesson is written in the third chapter of Jonah, beginning at the first verse. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city going on a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning at the 29th verse. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as if they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. As he went a little further, Jesus saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who also were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately, Jesus called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift before you all who govern this nation. May those who hold power understand that it is a trust from you to be used, not for personal glory or profit, but for the service of the people. Drive us from cynicism, selfishness, and corruption. Grant in your mercy just and honest government, and give us grace to live together 
in unity and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are two Bible texts that I, come, I find myself coming back to again and again. I go them, frankly, in times when I'm questioning my own call from God as a pastor. But I also go to them in times like these, when so many are asking, what is God's call to us as a people in this time, in this place? The first of these two is from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And the second is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are the standards which I try to hold to for myself. And these are also the standards I hope for from others who claim to be people of faith, whether they be Christian or Jewish or Muslim or another faith. All of the major world religions teach people to love God, love neighbor, do justice, act kindly, and walk humbly. And therefore, these are standards that we can have for one another. And these are also the standards that I believe we should hold to for our leaders, leaders in our congregation and political leaders in elected offices, including the Congress and our president. How do our and their actions show forth love of neighbor? How is justice and kindness and humility manifested in us and in them? Our Christian faith actually has a lot to say about politics, and our Christian faith informs, or should inform, what we can and should expect from our leaders. How does former President Trump look from these standards? How will the policies of President Biden encompass the love of neighbor, justice, kindness, and humility? Now, we are Lutherans, and Lutherans in the USA have a long history of studying social issues, and then through our church's study and legislative processes, making formal social statements on important issues. Our ELCA, that is the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA has official positions on war and peace, the death penalty, the environment, health care, racism, and more. Our church then uses these st statements to advise legislators at all levels of government. The ELCA has offices in Washington, D.C. and many state capitals for this purpose. We have certain standards for our community and nation, and we do know, we do let our leaders know what these standards are. For example, through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, known as LIRS, through LIRS, we have an 80-year history of welcoming refugees into our communities. The work of LIRS came out of World War II when millions of Lutherans were among that war's refugees. Since that time, the Lutheran Church has sponsored more refugees in our country each year than any other group except the Roman Catholic Church, which, as you know, is more than 20 times larger than our Lutheran Church. Over the last four years, President Trump drastically reduced the number of refugees allowed into the USA to nearly zero. So we're very pleased that President Biden has indicated he plans to return nearly approved refugee acceptance levels to their former numbers. You see, care for the immigrant and refugee is central to our faith. It is called for both in the New and Old Testaments. In infancy, Jesus and his parents became refugees in Egypt. I would go so far as to say that I do not believe one can be a Christian without a commitment to immigrants and refugees. That commitment is so central to our faith and life and our history. We also believe that all people deserve the right to basic health care, that no one should die because they do not have health insurance. We believe in equal rights for everyone, and that includes our black and brown neighbors and our gay and lesbian and Muslim neighbors. 
These are not positives or negatives about any new or former U.S. president. They are basic moral and political commitments we Lutherans have made as a church based on our faith and years of study. Now, our congregation has been fortunate to, to have grown in membership and worship attendance over these past few years, with our online worship attendance growing dramatically over this past year. Those who join us for worship often tell me they were drawn by our wide welcome, a welcome to everyone. Mount Olive's website contains a statement, a welcome statement, which includes these words. Who are we? We are young, old, single, married, divorced, widowed, poor, working class, middle class, well off. We are preschoolers, elementary schoolers, middle schoolers, high school graduates, college graduates, PhDs and GEDs. We are straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. We are black, white, Latino, Asian, Arab, Native American, Norwegian, German, and more. In short, we are people just like you. We are, we strive to be, a place of welcome and acceptance based on God's wide welcome and acceptance of us all in Jesus Christ. This is what we stand for as Lutherans, the grace and love of God for all, God's undeserved love for all, God's love available to and for everyone. And what is our response to such love? Love God, love neighbor, do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with God. These are our standards for ourselves and our leaders. They are or should be how we view any and all politicians this year and any year. With the recent claims by some of the terrorists who stormed the U.S. Capitol that God was on their side, I thought again of a wonderful story about Abraham Lincoln that I think I've shared with you previously, but it's worth sharing once again. During the height of the U.S. Civil War, President Lincoln was asked if God was on the side of the Union in that war. Suggesting this was the wrong question, Lincoln responded with these words. My concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side. And what is God's side? Love of God and neighbor, justice, kindness, and humility. Let us hold ourselves and all our leaders to those standards. Let us do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Let us love our God and our neighbor. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words we know as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, after each prayer petition, I will say, let us pray. And then we will all say together, have mercy, O God. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God rise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all earth. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofits and non governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For our new President Biden and new Vice President Harris, and for your guidance and care for them as they lead and help heal our nation. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, especially those anxiously awaiting COVID-19 vaccine, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For our congregation and community, for families, big and small, for our preschool, student shelter, and West Side Coalition, for all the organizations that in non-COVID times meet here during the week that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, Hear our prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Once again, thank you for joining us for worship here at Mount Olive. We're so pleased that you've taken some of your safer at home time to be with us in worship. Our weekly schedule continues as it has for the last number of months. Each week, we produce a new pre-recorded worship service and we release it, we announce it on Saturday afternoon around three o'clock. Each week around three o'clock, I send an email to those for whom I have an email address with the URL, the address, so to speak, of this week's worship service, so you can watch it at any time that following week or any time else. Also in that email, you're invited to join a group of us who gather on Sunday morning around 9 a.m., our old worship time, to watch the service together and then have some conversation. If you'd like to be added to that weekly email to know about our service each week, simply send me an email, send it to pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org, and I'll be glad to add you to the list. We also, as you see, have volunteers that help us with the service. 
We have musicians. We have people that read the first lessons. We have people that lead the prayers. Sometimes we have people that share away for the passing of the peace. If you'd like to help in any way with worship and have access to recording yourself at home, also drop me an email to pastor at mtoliverlutheranchurch.org and we'll see how we can fit you in. Now, I want to remind all members of Mount Olive that our winter congregational meeting, the annual meeting for approval of budgets and election, will be held at 11 a.m. next Sunday, January 31st, one week from today if you're viewing this service on January 24th. This meeting will once again be held via Zoom. I'll be sending our voting members more information, including the reports and the Zoom link for this meeting, but please remember to join us next Sunday at 11 after, of course, you joined us for worship. As always, I want to thank you for supporting Mount Olive with your prayers and financial gifts. You can send a, a contribution by check to Mount Olive through the U.S. mail. Send it to Mount Olive Lutheran Church, 1343 Ocean Park Boulevard, Santa Monica, California, 90405. Those of you who are local can make a donation of cash or check through the secure mail slot in our church office door. If you'd like to give electronically, there are two ways. Through our website, mtolivelutheranchurch.org, there's a giving button, and from that button you can make a one-time gift, a regular gift from your credit card or your savings or checking account. And we accept gifts via Venmo, venmo.com slash Mount Olive. However you support us, we are so grateful. Thank you. For our thanksgiving for the word, after each paragraph, I will say, for your word of life, O God, and we'll all say together, we give you thanks and praise. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Now send your spirit of truth, O God, renew your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call upon you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray together the words we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.